Okay, that'll probably be better. Stupid button right here. This is what always causes my problem. <laughs> Little button gets flipped when I swing this thing around my shoulder. All right, let's start over again. <laughs> Thanks for letting me know, Tool Man. Uh, I'm Bormuth Rax, of course. Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. Time for a brand new live stream challenge series. This is going to be the Roller Girl Challenge series. We're playing a bionic monster via the uh, experiment uh, scenario. Uh, we're dumped out in the middle of the wilderness. An unfortunate consequence of a bunch of testing by some evil scientists. And this is the character we are working with right here. So you can see up here, Bionic Monster, her name is Roller Girl because she has a pair of roller blades basically built into her feet and she's never allowed to take them off. So to do this I just summoned up via the debug menu a pair of roller blades just for the theme of the challenge and I've put them on my feet and I'm never allowed to take them off. I'm um, not sure what I'll do if I happen to get some kind of weird mutation that causes my feet to not have shoes. Uh, we'll deal with that if it comes up. Uh, but for the theme, I'm going to keep the roller blades on my feet 100% of the time, if possible. Um, so no voluntarily taking them off. So it's going to be really bad when I'm not on hard surfaces, and hopefully good when I am on hard surfaces. So it's going to be interesting to see how it uh, causes me to adjust my gameplay, and just how we're going to deal with that. Um, as always with my live stream challenges, you can use the commands like exclamation point challenge to get general overview of what I'm doing. Settings, which isn't going to tell you much this time because I'm playing a pretty vanilla game world setting. I've got wander spawns on, random NPCs on, things like that. But otherwise, I've got it set to a fairly default difficulty. I haven't cranked anything up or lowered anything insanely to up the challenge. Um, between the bionic monster and the always wearing roller blades, uh, that's about all I want to try this time. So it's just about dead even on the difficulty settings uh, for the other options. And then we've also got, of course, mod list, which is also nothing too special. Just the ones that I usually use. Um, I am doing full nutrition. I have not used simplified nutrition for the last few challenges. I'll probably just leave it off permanently. I, I really don't need it or have any really issues with it. Um, so that's turned off. Uh, I've actually turned back on fungal monsters, so I didn't disable the fungal. Um, what else? There was one other one that I always forget that I got rid of. Um, I can't remember now, but that's the list in the uh, chat window for the live stream. So anybody coming up can use those at any time to see what's going on. So let's talk about our character a bit. Uh, so as you can see, Roller Girl, female, bionic monster. Um, her deal is uh, she's escaped from the labs and is out in this wilderness area and I've got a victory condition set that uh, I need to try to basically... It's twofold. The challenge is twofold. One, I've got to keep the roller blades on, stay alive long enough, and her goal personally is to uh, basically make herself more beautiful and she's decided to do that by achieving post-threshold status in the Elfe mutation line and make sure she has the glorious trait which makes her very very beautiful well in her own eyes at least <laughs> so she's a bit delusional schizophrenic and uh, warped so we'll see what we can do she is a bionic monster but uh, she's decided that uh, becoming an elf and having the glorious trait is her goal in life so that's what we're gonna be trying to do we're gonna try to survive having all these bad bionic uh, going these bad bionics, the, the ruined ones, uh, they're going to cause some negative consequences. We're going to have to get rid of at least a few of them to be able to survive this. Um, and then see if we can find a way to uh, mutate into the LFA threshold, post-threshold. So that's kind of the, the goal and the, uh, the lineup here. So, yeah, Waikukin, it's uh, just gone up. <laughs> Um, so that's what our goal is. So here's our character. Uh, you can see the stats that I took, 9, 8, 10, 9. Uh, I do not have stats through skills running, so uh, we're not going to see any crazy changes there, uh, barring any mutations we might pick up. Um, I'll show you the inventory in a moment. We start with uh, dodge 3, melee 3, unarmed 3. And those are standard with the character when you take the bionic monster. I bought electronics, first aid, and mechanics. I put one point in each, which starts you with level two in each. That's so that if I do get an opportunity to remove bionics, I've got a little better chance of doing it successfully. Uh, those are the skills that affects that. 
And then we also start with Survival 2 as the monster. That's pretty much it. Everything else I put into traits to try to give us some kind of an advantage to be able to survive this. So we've got Fast Healer. I took Fey Eyes and Light Step less for their functions and more for the fact that they're going to nudge us towards the uh, Elf A mutation line. Both of those are in that line, and that'll help when we're doing some mutating to uh, actually push that direction. We've also got Robust Genetics. Since I knew we were going with a heavy mutation playthrough, I always try to pick robust genetics in those circumstances so that the uh, roll of the dice when you're getting mutations is a little more favorable for you. Then we're also schizophrenic. That's always fun to play with. We'll have a good time with that. Squeamish, trigger happy, and ugly. We're an ugly bionic monster with dreams of being a beautiful elf creature. So that's kind of the situation. Here's what we start with in this challenge. A very bare bones set of gear, tank top, foot wraps, hand wraps, shorts, cotton hat, bandana, noise canceling headgear. I'm not sure why they give this one the noise canceling headgear, honestly. Um, I know they give it to the broken cyborg, but the uh, bionic monster is actually a little different than the broken cyborg. So if we take a look at our bionics, here's our active. We've got metabolic interchange, scent vision, which I've never actually used, we have Bionic Claws, and we have a Water Extraction Unit, which I've also never used. So it'll be fun to try those two out and see how effective they are. Uh, but here's the interesting list. So the Bionic Monster is quote-unquote easier than the Broken Cyborg, mostly due to this list of bad Bionics. Um, it's missing a few of the really nasty ones that the Broken Cyborg has. The one it does have that I've got to make sure I get rid of at all costs is the Leaky Bionic. very first thing to go is going to be that. That's a constant negative drain to your hidden health stat that will eventually just kill you. Um, enough time goes by with that in your body, and your health stat drops so far, you can't sleep, you can't heal, just too many problems start occurring. You're constantly going to get sick with flu and cold and so on. So we've got to get rid of the Licky Bonic, but a lot of the other ones that are the really nasty ones for the Broken Cyborg aren't present. So we don't have the big noisemaker. Uh, that's what the headphones are usually used for, so you can actually sleep through that noisemaker. So this person doesn't have that. Um, so the, generally the, the bionics are a little bit different. So we do have this major negative, and the other ones are all negatives as well, but they're all minor negative comparatively. So we don't have the acid leakage one and the itchy metal thing, uh, which always causes sleep problems and crafting problems. So as long as we can get rid of the leaky bionic, we should be relatively okay. But uh, given the new status, it's going to be a little tough uh, for the removal of CBMs. We've got to chase down the auto dock, have the anesthesia kit, all that good stuff, and then make the attempt. So we'll see what we can do. Hopefully we can get that done successfully. Hey there, Cog Whistle. Thanks for following. Appreciate it. Um, so that's kind of where we're at. We do have a bonus here as well of an expanded digestive system. So between the expanded digestive system and the water extraction unit, um, it'll be kind of interesting how we can get along. And we've got bionic claws. So here's the de description if you haven't seen these. Vicious claws have been surgically installed inside your fingers, allowing you to extend and retract them at the cost of a small amount of power. These do considerable cutting damage, but prevent you from holding anything else while extended. So basically, while you have the claws out, you can't be holding weapons or things like that. Um, which isn't a problem. We'll just uh, They're basically Wolverine claws. So we'll be using those extensively early on as our primary weapon, probably. Now, that'll go nicely with our unarmed combat, melee combat, and dodge skills. So that'll give us uh, pretty good offensive capabilities, I think, to uh, keep ourselves alive. And we're really going to need that because we're going to be really slow moving out here in the wilderness with uh, rollerblades on. So we're not going to be able to run away from anything. So if a bear, a moose, or anything else shows up, it's going to be uh, game time. So we're just going to start trying to claw things up. A water extraction unit I've never used. Nanotubes surgically embedded in the palm of your hand will pump any available fluid out of a dead body, cleanse it of impurities, and convert it into drinkable water. You must, however, have a container to store the water in. So... That's pretty interesting. I've never had one of these before. So theoretically, if I've got an empty bottle or gallon jug or anything else, uh, I can kill something, use this to uh, suck some drinkable water out and store it. So that might ease our burden as well. 
to go along with this expanded digestive system. This uh, lets us extract more nutrition from food, but we're also highly resistant to foodborne illnesses and can sometimes eat rotten food, which eh, I don't usually have problems with food supplies. But uh, So we've got some interesting things to choose from, and uh, metabolic interchange will help us get our power back when we start siphoning that off. So I'm going to go pretty easy. I think the bionic claws initially are the only thing I'm going to be activating that might burn a little bit of power. Um, I don't think it burns much. Um, so we'll see. So that's that. Uh, back to the inventory. So like I said, just basic gear. This is our total inventory. We don't have a single item. Let's take a look at our map next. Here is our map. So not too bad other than putting us down in the middle of a forest way away from any kind of concrete that I can rollerblade on. So it's going to be a bit of a track to get to a surface that we can take advantage of our abilities uh, with the rollerblades. So the uh, nearest thing I see that's going to be pretty neat is we've got a cabin and a gas station right nearby it. So that's pretty much where I'm going to be heading. We'll work our way out of the forest here. I've already got survival too, so I don't need to worry about gathering things. I don't, can't carry anything really right now. So I think we're going to make the cabin our first stop. Then we'll come down and take a look at the uh, gas station. And then we're going to rollerblade our way down the road here and check out this town. Um, another town to the north. What do we got in this town anyway? Construction site, good chance of getting some tools, bookstore, some houses, ice cream shop, sporting goods is also a good one. Dojo, man oh man would I like to get some martial arts on this character early game. That would be pretty awesome to get certain martial arts to take advantage of this person's abilities. Another sporting goods store, radio station, another house. Clothing, grocery store, might get a cart, send some food, another bookstore. <laughs> oh man, we have a library, a bookstore, and a bookstore in this tiny little town here. Another grocery store and a garage. Well, that's that's a pretty awesome combination of buildings. There might be a few more down here. I actually, I'm not seeing the nameplate yet, so I think that's just the northern spur of a larger town area. I suspect the town's going to continue to the south and the nameplate's going to be down here. Um, so, yeah, I think that's going to be a pretty nice arrangement for us. If we can get down into that area, maybe set up in one of these houses as a base, and then start raiding into these bookstores and libraries, we can get an early start on some skill-ups. Um, I'm a little disappointed. I need houses. I need lots and lots of houses. In order for me to uh, get rid of the, the bionic I need to get rid of, I've got to get either a bionic basement in a random house or a hospital. And the hospital is going to be really, really rough early game. So bionic basement in a standard house is my best chance. And with only two houses showing, well, three, I guess, in this first little area here, that's not uh, too good a chance. There's a few I can see up there. But like I said, hopefully this opens out into a bit of a larger city area with some more house options. Because uh, that really is going to be my absolute number one focus. I've played the Broken Cyborg in the past, and uh, what basically kills me every time is not getting that uh, leaky bionic out in time. So, there we are. So, we do have an NPC. I've got random NPCs turned on. I've also got the newer... Um, did I actually put that in there? Uh, let me check. I can't remember now. I was thinking of putting in... The mod that mm, does the crazy mutated NPCs. Oh, yep, I do have mutant NPCs in, so I need to adjust my uh, my list of mute my list of mods to include that mutant NPCs. I didn't put that in there. Um, so we do have mutant NPCs as a possibility, both uh, wandering and static. I guess I'm not sure how they work. I've never played with them before, but we'll find out. Taking a look at them, this is uh, Rick Duff. Pants, polo shirt, pair of medical gloves, lab coat, boots, dust mask, safety glasses, and a hunting cap. Nothing I'm too excited about. I mean, if I got a few of the items, that'd be fine. But we'll try to play nice. She's trying to be a, a, a good person, trying to not scare people and get prettier and all that good stuff. So she, she's a misunderstood monster. Um, so we're going to play try to play nice with NPCs as much as possible. So let's kind of go ahead and get things rolling here. Hey there, Edisil. Welcome, welcome. All right. Um, I'll make sure I got everything set there. Dreams going fine. Everything's good there. All right. So we do have our Fey eyes. You can see our green eyes, and our roller blades have got little pink stripes on them, which is adorable. 
let's do an experiment. So let's see how much movement points it's going to cost me to step north one space <laughs> in the rollerblades in the forest. 172 points. <laughs> 172 points. That's an awful lot of points. I think it's, what, 112 normally uh, with regular shoes on a... Uh, on ground like that or maybe I'm thinking on hard floors but uh, 172 that, that's a lot so like I said we're not gonna be able to run away from anything while we're out here if something shows up it's gonna be party time right off the bat so I'm gonna try to be as careful as possible to avoid fights but uh, yeah broad daylight we'll find out what we can do okay let's chat with this guy hey there Rick Duff oops I'm deaf that's right <laughs> take off the headgear Oh, I look at that cute little cap. What are we wearing? That's our cotton hat. <laughs> Alright, and that took up 0.5 of our total 1.75 available volume. Now let's talk to Rick. Hey there, Rick. At least we've got shelter. We've got... How do you figure, Rick? <laughs> hey there, Dark Dagger. Welcome to the channel. How do you figure, Rick Duff? What shelter? You, you, you leaning under the tree or something? <laughs> Well, let's see. Well, let's just ask him about his quest. Um, da, da, da. Can I do anything for you? One job. Sure. What you want me to do? Important software on my computer that I need on USB. Sure, I'll do it. Pull, uh, pull the data onto this USB drive and bring it to me. Not a problem. And let's see if he wants to trade first. So he does have a lighter. And, ooh, he's got antibiotics. Hey, Rick. I really hope, even though I'm an ugly cyborg bionic monster, that you join me. It's going to be a really low chance, but uh, it sure would be nice to be friendly. I don't want to have to trudge back out here into the forest to track you down to turn this quest in. Um, yeah. So we've got, we know we've got another city nearby, so that was kind of nice. If nothing else happens from this quest, he has at least identified another nearby city and pretty much looks like fully mapped it for me, so that's a bonus, one way or the other. Am I seeing triple gun stores in that place? That sure looks like triple gun stores. So gun store, pharmacy, gun store, gun store, and the old butcher shop. That's, uh, that's an awful lot of guns for that little tiny city. And once again, one house, two house. <laughs> they really don't want to give me the option to find a bionic basement. I really don't want to go rollerblading down the highway looking for cities with some houses just to try to find a bionic basement, but uh, they may force me to do it. Okay, well, we know where that's at. We won't be able to do that real soon. Hopefully this road here connects to this and maybe has a branch that goes north to this city as well. That would be best for me, staying on the road with my rollerblades. Um, but we'll see. Alright, hey Rick, let's at least ask him. No, not yet. You want to travel with me? <laughs> zero, zero, ooh, 57% intimidate chance. That's right. I am the gravelly voiced bionic monster. I've got a high intimidate chance. Arg. This is a tough one. That's that's a high enough chance that I'm really tempted. If that was a lower, I would just shrug it off and say, "Nah, we'll we'll come back and see if we can finish the quest. Hopefully, a bear hasn't eaten him by the time we uh, we get the quest done." But sixty percent against the chances of me getting there and back. <laughs> well, I know I can take him if it comes to a fight. That's not the problem. Um, Storyline-wise, she wants to fit into society, so she's she, she feels bad about being a bionic monster, although she is schizophrenic, so I guess I'm going to have to be creative in the, uh, the, the storyline portion here. I know I'm going to justify some of this, but my idea originally was to be nice to NPCs, this isn't so nice, but the percentage is so high, I'm really tempted to give that one a shot. I'm gauging it against how far away that city is. If I can get to the road, I could actually get there really easily and probably get back pretty quickly. Assuming I could get in, get the drive, and get out without getting eaten. Which would be a lot easier at night, so I'd probably have to wait till nighttime, either at the cabin or the gas station, then make the trip over. 
I think I could reasonably do that quest pretty easily. It's not Killer Jabberwock or anything like that. And given my speed of movement and the uh, it being in a city, I think I could do it. I think the bigger danger that I'm tr considering is will he still be here when I finish it? <laughs> I think he will, because I'll be the reality bubble will be away from him, so I don't think he'll get eaten or anything. I'm gonna I'm gonna play nice. We're we're gonna be nice. So I'm gonna try to say that. Yeah, I know you'd say no. Um I don't think I will he take the noise canceling headgear? What what will he give me for it? Twenty five bucks. I could not quite get the lighter, but I could get the antibiotics. Um, cancel this for a second. I just want to triple check. There is no noisemaker on this list. Stiffness, visual disruptor, squeaky ankles, voice modulator, deformity. Man, no, no noisemaker. So I don't think I technically need this like the broken cyborg does. I'm going to trade it. I'm going to go ahead and do it. So we're going to talk to Rick. Not yet. Trade items, you take the noise gear, I'd like the antibiotics, and I guess I'll take the gum. I guess and the pills? I can't take that. There. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so now I got some caffeine, I got some antibiotics just in case. I think we're good. So we're gonna we're gonna be nice to him. We're gonna clear out of this area as quick as we can. Hopefully we do get the reality bubble away from him before he gets eaten by a bear and uh, get moving. So let's let's get heading over there. So like I said, I've got to survival already, so I don't need to scrounge around in bushes for anything at the moment. I can't really carry much. Um, I'm going to hope that the cabin and the gas station have at least uh, some food or uh, items that will be useful. Otherwise, I'm going to have to scrounge to a new location, but uh, we'll see what we can do. 172 movement points, but we're off and moving. Trying to avoid stepping on bushes as much as possible. Uh, no real chance there. Alright, no bears. Dog packs I could probably take apart. Hey there, Mr. Moose. Nah, I yeah, I'm not gonna kill a moose right now. I can't kill it. I can't cook it. Or, I mean, I can kill it probably. I can't cook it. Carry it. We'll go moose hunting after we've got a few other things established. Do I want a stick? Sure, let's grab a stick. I'd like one stick and one rock. Um, anything else? Possibly I could pop a water bottle out of the bushes. Guess we'll take a look. I'll take bird eggs. Those don't weigh much and are good food. Um, ceramic shard. That has some crafting purposes. Um, I'm already overweight. Look at that. How quick it goes. Oh yeah, the stick. Let's wield the stick. I won't use it for combat, but uh, I'm going to grab the shard. Damn, it's just popping all sorts of stuff out. Um, yeah, that has some uses. Alright, well, that's our last bush. Off we go. Another moose. Where are you at, Mr. Moose? Alright, he's ignoring me. He's just wandering around back behind me. Alright, let's grab the rock. <laughs> More rocks, newspaper, rattlesnake, opossum. I think that might be about as many rocks as I can pick up. Getting close. Alright, yeah, I know the wind's getting cold. Cabin should be coming up here pretty soon. Squirrel, deer, groundhog. There's the cabin. See how well stocked this cabin is. In my experience, cabins are almost always empty. I don't remember ever finding a zombie in a cabin. 
We'll actually go in the front door, even. Whoa, gas station's closer than it feels like from the map. <laughs> now, the gas station's definitely probably got some zombies. Um, I don't remember. Is there a back door? Yeah, there is. All right, we'll go in the back door. Whoops, ah, I was wrong. Shrieker zombie, look at that. All right, let's uh, leave the door open so he doesn't bash it down. Back away, drop the heavy stick... Turn on our bionic claws. And come here, you. So we battered him for 22. We blocked some with our arm. He's already hit us a couple of times. And down he goes. Alright, not too bad. Close that up. Butcher the corpse. I'm assuming I'm allowed to butcher because of my claws. I don't have a knife. I'll have to test that. What you got? Um, I am playing with the, not the most recent experimental, but from a couple of days ago. So the uh, carrion features are on, which I don't have any experience with yet. This will be the first series I've played with a relatively up-to-date experimental. So there's a lot of things I'm going to have to figure out that have changed recently. Nothing in there, nothing in there, really. You give me a workshop with not a single tool. But I can bash stuff apart in here for the uh, raw materials. Um, I don't know if I need to get rid of this stuff or what. I'm going to leave it alone for now. Okay, let's close up some windows real fast, then we'll take a look around. Okay, so, lovely cabin. I love cabins. We've got a wood stove. That's great. A lot of raw materials in here. Wood and couches and stuff, or chairs and tables you can take apart for the 2x4s and that. Not much else in here, though. And the bed. Swimming gloves. Uh, nah, nothing in that one. And a blazer. Mm. It's got warmth. How are my stats currently? I'm fine indoors, but what is it outside? Yeah, hmm. Torso, arms is what the blazer is going to help, so that would help those locations. Let's go ahead and throw it on. We'll throw it all on for now, then I'll uh, pare it down later. Okay, well, not much to look at here, unfortunately, so didn't have nearly the stuff I was hoping for. Um, it's pretty bare bones, but it's a nice isolated place we can set up if necessary, and there is a swamp down here where we could get water, but uh, I'm going to have to visit town if this gas station doesn't give us something. It's a full building, so it's going to have uh, at least some food, snack food, and hopefully some bottles or cans. Uh, maybe even a vending machine out front. We'll find out. Anything I want to do before I go down there? I think there are. I think I want to put together a few things. So let's grab the stick. Yep, yeah, put the claws away. That's interesting. So it gives me the message, but it doesn't actually do it. So I have to manually put the claws away. Alright, smash, smash. Let's get rid of this stuff down here. Uh, oops. All right, just get that out of the way. And let's move all of this stuff. Right there's plenty fine. Die, stupid couch. Alright, that should do for now. So 71 rags, some nails, scrap metal, chunks of steel, pipes, two by fours, and splintered wood. Step over to the light. Let's craft us up a makeshift crowbar. And 
Ah, new tab. I do not plan on doing this. I say that, I don't plan on doing it. <laughs> it may happen. We'll see how the challenge progresses, but I don't plan on actively pursuing the new uh, NPC base building thing. I want to uh, let a little more work be put into that before I delve into it, but uh, we'll see. All right, let's do some lock picks. Uh, actually, let's do. Do I want to go that route? Let's do the lock picks. Go ahead and do ten of them. And let's do one spike. And let's. Hmm. Ideally, I'd rather not take a curtain off. I think I'm going to wait on the last part until I go check out the uh, gas station. Alright. Um, not worried about heat or cold currently. What do we need for the cudgel? Uh, to a little cutting. Okay, so if I pull out my claws... Wow, the claws take a lot of power. Alright, that's going to be a problem. Huh. Alright. Do the makeshift knife. Now do the cudgel. Uh, just use my trusty heavy stick. All right, we're gonna go with the cudgel for our primary melee weapon. I'm not gonna go with the uh, the old knife spear. I know about the nerfs, the fragile status, and all that. Uh, I don't think it'll be necessary. So, especially since I got the antibiotics, just in case a bite does show up, I think I've got the ability to deal with it. Yep, yep. I'm aware of all the updates, Toolman. <laughs> um. <laughs> And the even bigger thing is that the first aid kits no longer cure infections. That's why I was pretty happy to see those antibiotics. Those are really, really important now. Bites should occur less often, but uh, with, an the <laughs> with the first aid kits not uh, healing uh, infections any longer, that's a pretty big change. I think even more so than the... Uh, the time to heal versus instant. Time to heal versus instant is less of a deal than most people think because you never really healed in or near combat anyway because it costs like 6,000 movement points <laughs> to do it. So you always had to do it when you were fairly safe anyway. So I'm not too concerned about the healing over time thing. And I've also got the fast healer trait, so I think we'll be fine there. Okay, I got no carry capacity. Um, do I want to deal with the bindle and all that? First, um, sure, we'll do a bindle. All right, so I think I'm all set. So let's drop the rest of this random stuff. All right, what's that get us to? 2.06 out of 7.25 with the bindle. Uh, just have to remember to dump it before we actually start fighting. Encumbrance-wise, we've got a lot of encumbrance issues, the bindle being the major one, but uh, a lot of the bionics that are failing cause additional encumbrance. That's where a lot of this is coming from. Um, but those numbers are all fine. I'll, I'll deal with them. Uh, more importantly, oh, I forgot to I forgot to mention. Take a look at this. Take a look at this number. <laughs> Yeehaw, seventy-two versus one hundred and seventy-two. Seventy-two, one hundred and seventy-two, and thereby is the nature of this challenge. <laughs> Being a bionic monster with uh, rollerblades on our feet. Okay, I think it's time to go down and take a look at the gas station. Uh, there's nothing else really I can craft or do that's really going to affect things, so let's go take a look. There is a vehicle out front, that's good. Oh, two vehicles and a motorcycle or a bike. 
That's a working security van. No wheels. That's got a wheel there. Got a wheel there. Might have enough. It could be a working security van. And that one's a military. All right, an APC. So security van, an APC, and a motorcycle. <laughs> All my first peak. Um, let's actually hug the building. And we will literally peek around the corner. All right, nobody out front, no other vehicles in sight. Who's inside, anybody? Oh, we got a map. <laughs> uh, that's glorious. Okay, well, we may not have a problem finding a hospital, hopefully. Hopefully this map chunk, but the place is damn near deserted other than the map. Toilet and a pudding cup. <laughs> Huh. Yeah. This is not anywhere near what I was hoping to find in this place. Oh, my vision pixelates. Lost some of my vision range. Alright. Well, hopefully the security van is going to have a gun. That's going to be a pistol right there in that basket. Whether it's got ammo or not is going to be an important question. Uh, we do have some vending machines, but uh, if I, that's an ATM, but there's a vending machine. Oh, that one's broken. Broken and no stuff, huh? This one I don't have a cash card yet, and if I smash it, I'm likely to get, uh... Is that a crash site down there? Oh man, we got a crash site. Any items? I'm not seeing any items at the crash site. You're chipping me, game. Alright, so we got a crash site with no items uncovered. Uh, vending machine, but let's check out the last thing. I'm really surprised that Shrieker's been the only thing we found up here so far. What are you giving me? A Glock 22 with 15 rounds. I knew it'd be a pistol. Whether it had ammo or not was going to be the question mark. You're working? If this is a working motorcycle. No alternator. No battery. Because the alternator's busted. No wheels. <laughs> Missing the back wheel. So it's not working. Got some parts I could take off of it with some tools. What else you got, security van? Is it going to be gold, silver, or diamonds? Diamonds! Love diamonds. Just in case we ever find a CBD machine, don't care about gold and silver. Alright, APC, you going to have anything useful? Nope. Are you a workable? We've got gas. Got a teeny tiny bit of battery. Might possibly be enough to start it with that. Uh, we've got ammo for the M2 Browning. We've got uh, wheels. Do we have a full front end? Yep, we've got all the controls that we need. Now the question is just the engine compartment. Oh, faulty diesel engine. Might still work. I don't think it's going to start. I don't think it... With faulty diesel pump... Yeah, it's not going to actually pump uh, the fuel into the engine, I don't think. So I doubt we're going to be able to get this thing running. Pretty entertaining, though. And we can always sleep in here if we have to. Um, well, I guess the next step is to read our map. So let's go ahead and... No, not reload. <laughs> read. Hey. Oh, that's right. We have to activate our map. Tourist guide. Activate. All right, here's the big thing. What do we got? Uh, it's a tourist map, so it's not showing me hospitals. Darn it. This is quite the cluster. So it's showing me mega stores. A lot of cities. All I'm seeing is coffee shops, mega stores, things like that. I was hoping for the map that was going to show me hospitals. Um, pretty good conglomerations of buildings down that way, or city size. Yeah, there's Townsend, the nameplate, so the city does kind of spread out a little bit south. And we've got another little city over here, Bradford, Mars Hill's probably tiny. No road connection, though. So, I thought the road would uh, bend over this way, but that's not the case. There's actually another little town just above me north here, so that's probably where I'll go first. So, we'll come back to you, Townsend, but... Um, well, I guess it's just about equidistant. 
We'll see. I should be able to move really quickly with the rollerblades. Uh, and Norwich Walk is a little bigger, it looks like, than Townsend. So I think this might be a uh, good direction to go. I'm not sure if I like having the cabin sitting out here kind of in the middle of things. It's both good and bad. It's got uh, points either direction. Um, yeah, the hospital is usually a 3x3, three three, but I mean any of these dead end points, I mean there could be a hospital sitting right here and we wouldn't be able to tell. Sometimes you can tell from the road configuration, but uh, everything that's 3x3 three three you can see currently is uh, megastores. And, uh, what is it, hotels, I think? Yeah, hotels and megastores. This particular map doesn't show hospitals, as far as I know. We can do a search. No results found. So, lots of megastores. It's showing me every single space of the megastore, but no hospitals on the map. So we'd have to puzzle it out from the, uh, the map location. And or find a new map. So... A lot of possibilities, but I'm not going to bother kind of searching out the map too much at the moment. We've got other immediate priorities to deal with, so all I'm really concerned with right now is this immediate area. And the decision of going north or south. No point in going over here. The only thing that... well, actually the point was to finish that quest. But I'd have to wander through a forest, it looks like, to get over there. I was hoping I would be able to just run that direction. But yeah, there's no continuous roadway over there. Uh, I suspect that, yeah, there's a river network in here, because there's a bridge. The way it's refusing to connect all of these sections here. I've got a long dead section running north to south up this whole area. Yeah, it doesn't connect all the way up. Eh, that section up there finally does. Huh. Um, which way to go? I can't stay where I'm at. I think to satisfy my immediate needs, I'm going to push north. I'm going to assume this is a small town with this little four-way intersection. There's going to be like four or five buildings. That's going to be a little easier for me to try to infiltrate. And if there's even a couple of houses, that'll give me a really good op opportunity for pots for cooking and some containers and such, as opposed to these larger places. So I'm going to go north along the road. Um... So let's do that. Oh, hello, body sight. In a nice orderly row. That changes things a bit. <laughs> oh, we got power armor helmets sitting out here. <laughs> oh, good old cataclysm. Alright, let's see the list. What's on the list here? Sort by category, please. We got a screwdriver and a sewing iron, or soldering iron right out here. It's a lab lab body site. This is awesome. I probably knew that because of the power armor. But uh, screwdriver, insanely useful for us early game. Soldering iron, also awesome. Um, we can make do with some of this stuff, possibly, to improve our current setup. Plastic bottle of clean water. Five science ID cards. <laughs> well, I guess our trips into the labs for mutagens is going to be uh, pretty much already guaranteed now that we've got five ID cards right off the bat and a gallon jug of bleach. All right, so how am I going to get all this stuff back to wherever I want it to go? This this changes things quite a bit here. Um, Yeah, Rap the Roar. This is the very first character. We've only been up for, oh, 40 minutes. <laughs> um, let's see. I don't have that much carry capacity currently. Let's grab the soldering iron. I'm going to have to come back and root through the clothing. Grab the immediately useful things, the tools and the ID cards. Well, the ID cards aren't immediately useful, but... You know what I mean. They also don't take up much space. Cargo pants that fit. All right, we're 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 wearing some cargo pants that fit. That's going to help out our carry capacity. Hmm. 
Another pair of cargo pants. Um, grab a gallon jug. It's a clean suit here too as well. I'm going to put the clean suit on as well. Is that two soldering irons? That's two soldering irons. Well, that's nice of them. Power armor helmet. Ridiculous. There's my clean water. Can't quite carry my clean water. Let's throw on that fitted lab coat. That'll give us an extra three and a half storage. And we can grab the water. And... There we go. Alright. I am wielding my power armor helmet. <laughs> Creatively. The rollerblades are built into her feet. <laughs> that, that's the... the Storyline I'm going with. She's a bionic monster that uh, had the little roller blades built into the bottoms of her feet, so she can't remove them. But they're not—they're not like the big over-the-foot type of things. They do prevent me from wearing out any other footwear, but uh, that, that's my reasoning behind it. <laughs> All right, so pretty crazy start. Um, do I store this stuff in the cabin? I think I probably do. Well, let's go ahead and throw this stuff in the cabin. Now that I've got the couple of items there, I'm just going to throw everything into one pile. Um, don't need to carry those with me. Alright, let's go unload the bleach. Ah, already messed up. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, yeah. All right, so we got water in our gallon jug. Do I want to do anything else in here? Smash up counters. These are. That's a display rack, so that's going to be metal. So I can get more pipes and metal from that. Um, I've already got the fireplace. Alright, so, we've got our cudgel in hand, we've got a Glock with us. Uh, I'm going to have to sort out my clothing though, I just threw on a whole bunch of crap just to be able to carry stuff over here. Um, screwdriver is awesome. I do not have... actually I do have mechanics too. That's right. And we've got the truck. Alright, another another trip out. I'm just securing... God, it's getting... oh, that's the... Uh, it's, it's only noon. That's just the uh, storm causing the thing to look like it's getting dark. Um, Alright, so you... Examine vehicle. I want to remove. My morale is too low to construct. Stupid rain. I am wet and I have a bad feeling. <laughs> Good old schizophrenia. All right, we'll have to come back. I was going to pull the uh, seat belts apart for the rope, which I could then use for string, thread, etc., etc. Uh, but it won't even let me rip stuff apart while I've got the bad morale. So we'll have to come back for that. But between the display racks and the wooden counters in the gas station and what I have in the vehicles, I've got pretty much all the raw materials I'm going to need for a while for the early game stuff. Um, so we've now got a gallon jug. I need something to boil water in. I still don't have anything to boil water in. Um... <laughs> Yeah, I don't have any aluminum cans. I don't have pot or anything yet. 
So we're still going to make that trip north. I think I can get the rest of this solved by uh, just heading north. So I think we're good. Uh, let's drop the gallon jug here as well. <laughs> so give me that pudding. Where'd my pudding go? Where are you at, pudding? All right. So we'll take the pudding. We'll take the water. We'll. Uh, Eat and drink those here in just a minute. Um, other than that, I think we're good, except for crazy amounts of encumbrance. All right, what am I going to do about this? Uh, oops, bring that back up. I got cargo shorts and cargo pants on currently. Mm. So the clean suit and the lab coat are. Uh, the clean suit's gotta go. It's not providing me any carry capacity and it's giving me extra encumbrance. Um, torso 22, I'm okay with that. So. I am just fine with that. The bindle's the big thing causing the arm and hand encumbrance. Actually, I think I'm okay with the rest of it. All right, let's go ahead and have our pudding and drink some water. Alright, let's go ahead and follow the original plan. We're going to head north along the road. We've got some carry capacity. Even if we drop the bindle, we've got enough. I could probably get away with uh, what I need. So, still looking to secure our initial survival. I did check this one, right? Yes. Anything else that I care about? Just all closed now. Alright. Hello kitty cat and squirrel. Coyote. Amoebic mold. No, no amoebic. Actually, amoebic mold. That's usually a body site, isn't it? Where's the amoebic mold? Where are you at, mold? Mm, I see the two molds. What are you guys doing sitting around up there? Migo! Yep! <laughs> Alright, Migo I do not want to tangle with quite yet. Uh, 47, so there's a... Oh look! Rollerblades! <laughs> the game knew what I wanted. Alright, let's make a note that somewhere up in here... Migo, body sight. Uh, two different pairs of rollerblades. A fitted pair of rollerblades and a standard rollerblades. That's interesting. I guess I actually want fitted rollerblades. I don't think the ones I summoned automatically are fitted. So, we'll go in there, grab that, replace the wheels, and then consider them fitted in, in our installed-in-foot versions. So, I think that's a sporting goods or a sport site. So, football players and things like that. Um, so we're going to try to stay out of line of sight of that for now. Stay on the road. 75 movement points. Alright, how's it looking up here? Lots of zombie sign. I love the arrangement of houses. Isolated houses off by themselves. I'm not liking all of this zombie indicators. Another cabin. Alright, let's actually angle up this way. See if we can scooch into that cabin. Shady zombie. Shady 
Shady zombie won't be able to see me. Tough zombie can. You guys all over the cabin? They're all over the cabin. Uh, destroy. It's partially destroyed cabin? This is... This is a different cabin, I think. Kind of surprised at the uh, zombie presence there. Hmm. Um. I'm not sure yet just how effective this person is. And my power is zero, so I can't get my claws out with zero power. So that's being caused by these bad bionics draining my power uh, constantly. So I think it's the short circuit that does that. Poorly wired bionic fails to serve its intended purpose. Malfunctioning device periodically short circuits causing systemic muscle tremors. No, not that one. Well, one of these things is causing a regular power drain. And I'm not in the position to really compensate with the uh, uh, metabolic interchange. I need to secure my food and water before I try to do that. That's right, I have that water extraction unit. But I think it takes power to activate. I'll have to test it. I'm not sure I can do that with zero power. We'll see. So, can I get rid of the tough zombie? I'm not worried about the shadies. We're going to try. Let's, yep, he's coming for me. Whoa, I totally forgot just how slow I am. Look at that guy sprint at me. <laughs> God, I don't want to lose this challenge just because I... Alright, well, I don't want to lose this start with all this cool stuff we found in this weird, nice map. Just because of that. So, I want you on the bush, and I'm going to try to beat you to death. Hopefully we can manage it. Eh, of course. <laughs> so much for having him on the bush. Well, I can't run away from him. Eh, maybe? Just fast enough with run mode. Let's try another bush. There we go. Uh, crap. Totally forgot my encumbrance. Let's pick a different bush. Drop. Indole. There we go. Alright, that's better. Ooh. Quickly struck him for four. Ouch. Struck him for five. Struck him for five. Two, so we're barely getting damage in. He's only lightly injured. That's not a good progression. I'm thinking of uh, whipping, pulling the Glock out. I think I'm going to. Let's retreat. Crap, he's fast enough to hit me while I'm running. Oh, now I'm running. Oh, minefield! Um, that could be entertaining. I don't think I can get the uh, distance on him to really draw him into it reliably, though. 